Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. Your co-host, Rich Gear here, and uh, we got uh, something in the news to talk about, don't we, Doug? Well, uh, it seems like uh, if yeah. September comes around, uh, it, it's time to uh, trot out the, for National Geographic to trot out the monkey. Yeah, fossils. the latest, latest new ape man, or new uh, uh, ancestor to human beings. And the latest one is something called Homo Nadali, right? Is what they want to yeah, call it, right? Nadali or something Nadelli, like that. Nadali, okay. And but um, it's, it's interesting that we actually have some of our South African friends who are uh, in contact with these people and uh, the, the controversy is quite interesting because uh, we may have a, actually a, a chance to uh, influence the outcome of of uh, how this is presented uh, because uh, uh, because of our contacts over there. Right, and uh, it's interesting, yeah, Buk, uh, Mr. Iwa Bakma, and he uh, he is uh, right, he's a friend of the people that, dis that were involved in this expedition, correct, Doug, or, or am I wrong? I don't know if he's a friend, or but he knows, knows, knows him. And, knows uh, him, okay. Uh, he's actually, he and Danny Faulkner have uh, actually talked with him. Uh, when Danny Faulkner was over there, uh, I think it was last. Is that year. that burger guy, or is that is that uh, Danny Faulkner is the fellow who is? No, no, uh, I know Danny Faulkner. I mean, but the, 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 they know the the burger guy. The is that is that the guy that's uh, that's, that's no, it's a, an, another fellow. Let me, uh, uh, See if we can find it. Yeah, get the, the name. It was, uh, uh, and what uh, what we are proposing? Uh, his name is Bernard uh, Zipfel. Okay. And, 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 his, uh, and what we're proposing is that uh, these uh, fossils that they're finding in this cave, uh, uh, that uh, they would uh, uh, carbon date them, uh, and that uh, the Creation Research Society would uh, uh, pay to have it done. And, and so this would be a, an excellent uh, opportunity for um, for us to establish. Is this, uh, you know? Uh, millions of years old, or is this? Uh, well, or, I, even they wouldn't say it's a, millions, but I'd say they, years old. they think it's like you know, tens of thousands of years. Sixty, at least what sixty thousand, or or well, it's got to be more than that. Well, they're is it one point eight. They're hoping for us uh, two point one million. Oh, because Austral it's in, during the time of the Australopithecines. Oh, yeah, yeah, and okay, and it's interesting because you know when you and I were down, we've talked about this other times on different shows about the Sturkfontein caves, which we uh, right. so this, there's a. There's a real treasure trove of discovery down there. Unfortunately, so much of it is it's couched in evolutionary terminology. Right. But uh, neat having uh, a lot of people that are creation people that are right in that same same location. And if we can get a chance to carbon carbon fourteen a sample, it would be nice because, um, it, as we've pointed out many times, carbon fourteen has really become our friend. You know, uh, and if it comes like to gets a very young date. Because you were saying, Doug, you, earlier before the show started, you were talking about this stuff is not fossilized in the classic sense of it. Is that correct? Yeah, it's not uh, uh, been replaced by uh, uh, minerals. It, uh, it, it's actually bone they're finding here. And um, this was found in a, a cave called the Rising, Sun, uh, Rising Star Cave. Right, uh, right. It was north of uh, Johannesburg, and it's sort of in this... Uh, what they call the cradle of humankind uh, right, right, right. area. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, the, there is a couple of museums in that area. The uh, Marotang uh, Museum was the one that we didn't go to, but, but the other one was the Sturkfontein Caves, and we yeah. were able to uh, actually climb into that cave and, uh, and look around. It it's, yeah, that, that's fascinating because that was the cave where they discovered really a lot of uh, or several interesting uh, specimens of Australopithecine type skeletons mm -hmm. and the stuff that creationists have been saying for many years that really these are nothing but an extinct form of, of chimpanzee or, or ape-like creature um, the the human the hands and feet uh, n not only were they not like humans which is like the Lucy reconstructions always make them like humans. Mm -hmm. uh, they were more arboreal than modern chimpanzees. They were they were more curvature and things like that. So, Doug, let me ask you this: I was reading some of the stuff before then, some of the salient facts that yeah, goes right, into yeah. it. Because we as creationists, we'll put our cards on the table here, so you understand. We believe it's either fully human or, or an ape. There's no subhumans and ape, ape ape men 
type things. There are, yeah, I mean, there are people that act like apes, but they're they're either full, they're fully human, or you're, or you're an ape uh, or a gorilla type creature of some sort. You may be an extinct form um, and that's that's unlike what we have around now. But it's not a, an ancestor to human beings. And some of those uh, those differentiations. Uh, this article down here with Dr. David Menton talked about right. five different thing or five different things you could talk about that were that you could tell like the the size of the cranial capacity the slope of the forehead um, I'm trying to think of some of the other things he talked about um, oh the the nasal passage of the human has a bony protuberance out of here with a gorilla with an ape has just a fleshy there's really no bone in the in the nasal p parts of it things of that nature right. um, and what's interesting about this creature Doug <clears throat> the controversy is the ankles and, and bones seem to be a little bit more, uh, a little less arboreal, I guess, would, would, I would say. Is that, is that what, am I getting that right when the little bit I was reading on that? Um, it, it, more like Neanderthal are saying is what I'm saying, is what right, the one article yeah, said. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how accurate that is. Cause yeah, and the other like thing hand, they're, but, they keep uh, puzzling <laughs> over is that uh, they're finding these uh, uh, fossils way down in this cave. And it's a uh, an area that uh, is uh, pretty hard to get to. And yeah, they had to crawl like a tunnel, like they had to kind of crawl in their belly about eighty yards or something, or eighty feet or something like right. that. Right, and uh, and they're finding out that the, uh, this area was. Uh, they were figuring that they buried them down there, that uh, you know these creatures actually buried their dead in this this particular spot. But the but, but how, I guess how can they tell that that's what they actually did? Uh, it, it seems to be a little that uh, you know if they were ape-like creatures that uh, they would have gotten down into this cave and then sort of got caught there and that's where they died. Yeah, in the Sturckfontein caves, uh, some of the issue was is they they they, they told they they fell through like sinkholes or like right. and they would and they would die. Um, the other thing is sometimes Doug in the, in the past we've talked about certain fossilized. Uh, thing. Of course, these creatures were not really fossils. These are really not fossils. Right. They basically have this assumption of deep time. You know, a couple mm -hmm. million year old they want or something like that. But the fact of the matter is, is, is that um, th these are bones that, that are not mineralized. These are, they're, they're real, not technically fossils in the classic sense of the word, or even partial fossils. They're pretty much just bones. Okay, but how they got there, Doug? For all I know, in the past there could have been some volcanism or earthquake, or they could have there could have been a rift that was open. We don't know. Obviously, I, there, there, may be, may, there may or may not be any evidence to that point. But that they could have crawled in there and, and died. But there's so many of them. There's about 50, they got about 1,500 pieces of bone from about 15 different mm -hmm. individuals, as I understand it. Uh, but 15 individuals, that's not a lot, really. Okay, right, yeah. but we're were they trying? They could have been trying to escape well, it's, something. It's quite a bit, a bit of, uh, uh, of fossil materials for for this kind of uh, creature. You know uh, that it would have been uh, something that they you, you wouldn't find a lot. Of, you know, a lot of these uh, ape man fossils supposedly uh, are quite rare. And, uh, right, right. You yeah. usually find uh, them fragmented and uh, just. But the, to, Doug, when I'm looking at this thing though, the slope of the forehead. <coughs> mm -hmm. And the size of the brain capacity, there's really no, as I understand it, there's no, the, 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 the nasal thing, it does not have a bony protrusion. The face is sloping. This is basically another gorilla. It's an australopithecine. Right. I think the controversy, Doug, is that there's several of these individuals, 15, uh, found way 80 feet inside of a, on a, on a on a tunnel. But how would you bury somebody? How would you do, you, know, you see what I'm saying, Doug? Even, even if yeah. it was they were trying to bury their dead. Why would they crawl 80 feet into a place that, I mean, right, that, that doesn't make any it's sense more, at all. Uh, more likely that uh, the, these creatures were uh, uh, found their way into the cave and that's where they uh, they couldn't find their way out. Yeah, that's what I think, you know. I mean, to me it look, makes more sense. But these don't seem to be really anything more than another extinct form of ape. Mm -hmm. uh, when you really get right down to the, the thing. And but Dr. The, David Menton you know, was the guy who uh, was, uh, he's the guy who created the Lucy exhibit at the Creation Museum. Right, and yeah. He, he's the one who, uh, yeah, I think we interviewed him a number of years ago and, uh, at uh, the uh, one of the Answers in Genesis. 
we did. Uh, conferences, and yeah. we, that was pretty neat uh, yeah. to talk with him. We had a skull session with him because he had his <laughs> literally, uh, yeah, his yeah. skulls. Yeah, he's a very interesting guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's the guy who did that uh, talk about the hearing ear and the seeing eye. It was just a fabulous. He's got some incredible things to, to to share. Yeah. But anyway, this challenge that the Creation Research Society is putting forth is uh, quite an opportunity because what we can do is put forth something where we can actually have an experiment done, uh, either verifying or, or fal falsifying our assumptions that the, these creatures are young. And uh, what they, uh, if we have a carbon-14 dated, uh, then, uh, you know, if, if there's uh, signs of carbon-14 in these fossils, they're not millions of years old. They're yeah, uh, thousands anything of years after about, old. Yeah, anything after about 50,000 years, as using their scenarios, is really suspect. You have virtually nothing left of the half-life. Let me ask you this question. Is, what about, you know, with all the stuff we've been dealing with in the news with, uh, like, dinosaur DNA and, mm -hmm. and soft tissue. And is there any of that color? Maybe is there stuff in there? Could they find any? Oh yeah, there, there's probably a possibility of even finding soft tissue. Tissue and, and DNA samples and yeah. find out if that, that, tell, that might tell you some stuff. But if you got DNA, again, Doug, you're not gonna get something that's millions of years old mm -hmm. either. DNA right. just doesn't last. I don't care what kind of a pristine environment, you're not gonna last, it's not gonna last, uh, you know, a uh, hundred thousand years, let alone a couple of million. It's not going to last. Right. It's not going to last, and so it'll break down. So if you find DNA, that also makes it problematic. Um, but to get to get access to these things, like you say, Doug, is pretty hard to do. I mean, yeah, you know, let, let me read the, what, what, what do. the response of the of the of this uh, fellow uh, was to uh, Dr. Bachman's uh, suggestion that it be. Uh, uh, carbon-14 dating, right, it, right. it's kind of interesting. It says, uh, thank you for your message. Hey, you're absolutely right, this material is not fossilized in the classical sense, and we think that direct tests to the bones in terms of dating and DNA extraction is possible. This has not been done yet for several reasons. The sampling is destructive, Yes, and we need to apply for a permit from the South African Heritage Resources Agency and carefully choose the elements we, we will destroy. Radiocarbon dating only goes back about 60,000 years, so it's limited in older material and more than often than not, it gives a dodgy date. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, take a note of that, okay? Yeah. Uh, usually we date the adjacent calcium carbonate with uranium lead, but there is no geology uh, directly associated uh, to, with the bones, and, and there's also no associated fauna to a date. Uh, it would be pre preferable to use techniques that can span a greater range of time, both earlier and more recent in one, one go. None of this can happen without the necessary permit, though. Watch this space as we are all keen to get a date. Either way, very old, either two million years, which is what the morphology looks like, or younger, say 40,000 years, it has interesting ramifications. At present, we have no intention of sectioning any bone for histology. We can do that with, uh, with micro CT and the synchrotron mm. in a non-destructive manner, so this will be done, being done as we speak. There are many projects running on these skeletons by about 48 scientists. So in time, we should get the fuller picture. Yeah, but what is his response there? I thought it was kind well, of... Well, his, that was the response. Oh, oh, that was his response to his, but, but I thought what Dr. Bulkman is, is, yeah. is the assuming the deep time is what I'm saying, what he, he responds to the response it looked like when he was writing to you, Doug, you know? Yeah, well, the, the response here was from uh, Wilbur Enns. Oh, was it? Okay, I thought it was Dr. Bulkman. Yeah, okay. it says, thank uh, everything Bernard Ziffel and his said is straightforward and correct, except they're assuming that the skeletons are older than 60,000 years. You can see by this, that post how Dar this Darwinic deep time throws a monkey wrench into everything. Pun intended. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. That's so, true. Uh, so that's the whole uh, uh, issue here is that uh, uh, they're uh, attempting to uh, establish a deep time for these particular fossils. And uh, I think that uh, if we uh, uh, disprove that, 
Well, well again, but next year they'll come out with their ne ne new flavor of the week. It's kind of oh, interesting. Yeah. How many times have they had to backpedal? And of course, Natural Geographic has been pro-evolution since its inception, you know? Right. And the fact of the matter is, I mean, they've still got egg on their face from the Archaeoraptor a few years back, the bird dinosaur feather mm -hmm. thing, you know? And, uh, and it, was a, it was a fraud from China. Well, the problem yeah. is that, uh, you know, there's still that impression still floating around there that uh, uh, somehow that's true because they... Uh, they put out the big fan, the big fanfare these uh, fossils, and then how when, many, uh, how when many they, hoaxes? Uh, yeah. Uh, then when they get the real story, uh, it just sort of dies down and quiets. Uh, I feel like a lot of people are like in the Matrix, away. man. They ba they're uh, basically they basically they basically have the the uh, they've 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 eaten the red pill. Is it the red pill or the blue pill or whatever it is? And you know, as creations, we've eaten the, eaten the pill that lets us see what the reality is, and it's not always pretty. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, most people are just content. Then you're right, the, the thing floating around, feathered dinosaurs, I, I, it's like, Doug, there's just so many things. They just, they just say stuff over and over again, and the evidence to the contrary, or, or to, to really mm -hmm. disputes it, just gets shoved aside because they don't want to listen to it. I mean, it's... And I go, that's, that's not science at all. But anyway, that, that's an old story. We, we run into it all the time. But it's like, I, Doug, even, well, this, this thing will come. How many, how many skeletons have they come up with over the last century or so? And every time they come up with something, they keep, they end up with what the creation has said. You either got humans or you got apes. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and they'll keep putting it. I mean, how many, this article here, I, I, they're bringing out the Homo habilis. And Homo florensis, or whatever uh, it is. These are, these are bogus c categories. I mean, the Homo habilis is basically a bunch of fossils left over where they couldn't figure out where they went. They threw in a junk box, it feels like, you know? It's a junk box, uh, you know, a hybrid type of thing. It, it doesn't, and nothing fits. It's kind of, uh, maybe not as as, bla as uh, blatant as the Piltdown Man was, but uh, look at the Piltdown Man. We, we, I know we, we, we use that, we've talked about that many times. You know, oh, that's old news. I know, but it serves the principle to show how dishonest these people are. And often, I'm not saying every evolution is, is dishonest, but a lot of them are so wedded to their theory, Doug, that they will allow a hoax to last for 40 years that was very mm -hmm. poorly done in the first place. And that's the problem, you know, that we run in this homo Nadali. Um, they're getting better. They're getting a little more circumspect. I think the, the, these guys are, they're not coming out right out and saying, oh my gosh, new modern, but boy, National Geographic, they're on that just like, you know, you know. Well, you, you know, uh, what they're doing is that they're making the appearance of being honest, but the, it's the overall implication uh, yeah. that uh, you know, this whole thing is being held up by uh, little toothpicks. Well, they're saying, oh, see, here's a, Here's another missing link. And I go, well, then it turns out that's not a missing link. Or it's mm -hmm. really something that, this happened over and over again many times. I say the, the longest running one was, was probably, well, Piltdown Man was a long one, but you have uh, Neanderthal Man, you have Australopithecine uh, discoveries, mm -hmm. but again, Australopithecine is really an extinct form of, of chimpanzee or, or, or ape-like creature. Uh, uh, Neanderthal is pretty much, yeah, the large, the, yeah, that has a larger cranial capacity than modern man. Right. In that book we did, year, we talked about it years ago, Jack Cuozzo's book, you Buried mm -hmm. Alive, he said they, they've, they've adjusted, the, he's an orthodontist, he said they've, they've pushed out the chin for, uh, 40 degrees, or 30%, or 30 I guess is what it was. Uh, they, they've, they, they've, and he put, he put it back to where, where, where it would line up in the jaw properly, and it's a fully humanoid face. And somebody right, asked yeah. him the question, well, they found children in this, in this uh, Neanderthal thing. Do they have the brow ridges? And they don't. No, they don't. They don't have the brow ridges. So this is probably an old man who's lived 168 to 209 years based on modern rates of maturation. Uh, could be up to 400 years in, if an ancient maturation. But again, um, these are all fun things to talk about. But Doug, every year, you're right, every September, we trot out a new, a new uh, ape man, you know? And I'm going... I uh, do you remember Nutcracker Man? Uh, Nutcracker, I remember him. Uh, talk about him. Well, uh, I think uh, Dr. Cozo had that in his book, and uh, uh, the actual fossil has a, a bullet hole in it. Yes, oh, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there are things like that. They're, they're, they're just anomalies that are just out there, and they just kind of shove them under the carpet, and it's, it's like, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at the wizard we got with the flames and the head and the disembodied head. Look at how 
majestic, but it's all an illusion. It's all a flim-flam uh, game, and this is what it amounts to. And of course, Doug, you know, the more sinister aspects of this are that people are losing their eternal salvation, their eternal life, because they're buying into a, basically a, 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 a chuck and jive move, okay? Uh, the less sinister, but still pretty sinister, a lot of it's about money, Doug. Who gets the grants of people who oh, yeah. a new estate man? They get all the money. They get all the money. And, uh, and uh, you know, what's that old, was it, was it Jerry Maguire? What's the one, show me the money? You know, that line, mm -hmm. and that's about what it is. You look at the money, follow the money trail, and, and you see, oh, my gosh, oh, okay. Yeah, they, and they when get you get right grants, down to you know? it, this is kind of an, uh, an exciting story, you know. If you talk about uh, having, uh, getting these uh, young girls or children to uh, spelunk and dive into this cave, and there's a, a spot where there's only just a few inches that they can squeeze through in order to get to this uh, the bottom part of the, wow. the cave. If you're that, claustrophobic, you don't want to go yeah. into this thing, do you? Uh, it, it's a uh, interesting story from that aspect that they were able to uh, uh, get these fossils out. And, well, uh, it is because you had to crawl way in there, Doug, mm -hmm. and I go, man, that is a kind of a scary thing. And if you get lot lost, yeah, no wonder those those creatures couldn't find their way out. They didn't have candles right. and, and splunking equipment, all that, the modern ones, but even so, Doug, it's it's a it's a kind of a harrowing experience. It seemed to me, uh, pretty pretty great. But you know, why can't they just leave the story with? But they have to embellish it with this ape man stuff. You know, right, it's yeah. like they have to they have to make this something. I say, oh well, we went 80 feet in and found a bunch of chimpanzee bones. Not nearly as exciting as finding a, a pre a prehistoric you know, fossil ape man thing. Now, what you know? uh, well, another thing to consider with this is that it's a uh, sequence of uh, fossils that they're trying to promote. But okay, uh, right. you, each fossil that you find is actually a snapshot in time. And uh, by itself, you can't pr uh, prove a, uh, an evolutionary s sequence. Because, uh, no, you can't. Because, because yeah. uh, each fossil stands on its own as uh, this is what a creature looked like at, at a certain time. Now. No, we also understand that uh, you know, in order to uh, get your ape man caricature, a lot of uh, license needs to be uh, put into place to uh, uh, an artwork and uh, well, our artistic license. I know I renew my <coughs> artistic license every year, and uh, boy, you, we can make stuff look so real, man. You know, we can we can doctor things up, but we don't. Again, you could get a pretty good scenario based on, but but it's based on mm -hmm. modern, uh, modern things. But over the years, again, we've seen restorations of Neanderthal man, mm -hmm. where he looks like a brutish ape-like thug, to a guy you wouldn't mm -hmm. recognize if you passed him on a street corner in the city of New York. You know? Yeah, and, and there's wonders that you can do to a fossil with a Dremel tool. Well, yeah. we don't want to get into that, but <laughs> yeah, but that's Piltdown man did that. I don't know it was a Dremel tool, but whatever they did, they ground the teeth down and stained it with some right. kind of bad, you know, it was a bad, because the jaw didn't fit, you yeah. know? And, uh, but the thing is, uh, well, Doug, I mean, what, I mean, the, the excitement of the adventure of these kids going down into this thing, but um, what, would, what would you want to, you want the audience to take away from this new discovery? I mean, uh, we get the last couple of points, well, maybe, you know? Well, we well, I think the, the point we want to make is that, uh, uh, again, let's point to carbon-14 as the uh, ace in the hole that, they have, that the creationists have, uh, you know, to disprove that evolution ever took place. Right. And you know, that's exactly the opposite of what the evolutionists would want you to believe, is that uh, they'll say carbon-14, uh, they want you to uh, give the field of millions of years. Well, yeah. And, uh, of course, you can't get uh, millions of years of carbon-14. Yeah. Uh, and like they said, uh, 60,000 years at the tops. Uh, but uh, we would say uh, that there's uh, different uh, things with the carbon-14 dating uh, because the equilibrium of, uh, of the formation of carbon-14 in the atmosphere has not been achieved yet, and it's not uh, something that we've established is uh, constant, and so we uh, have explanations why even carbon-14 carbon dates are 
uh, skewed uh, two longer high. longer dates than they probably would. But Doug, the thing is, that's the, the carb fourteen is very very significant. Uh, the, the the thing about it is is that uh, the, this guy gave two caveats, which makes me feel like they're not going to do the carbon fourteen or they're right. going to try to resist it. Number one, they assume the fossils are a couple of million years old, right? And they're not totally fossils yet. Yeah, they, they don't, don't want to use carbon fourteen. They don't want to use carbon fourteen because, because, because it shows not going to give them yeah, the date. exactly. If if they shows carbon fourteen, they're in trouble. And number two, oh well, carbon fourteen is destructive. Right. So we don't want to destroy a fossil. But there are there's a, there's fifteen hundred fragments. Mm -hmm. You could get a piece of it and not really miss it. You know what I'm saying? You could check it out. But those are the things I worry about, Doug. They're going to figure out a way to dodge it. So anything else you want to take away from this, Doug? Is that the carbon fourteen thing? Well, um, uh, the other thing I want, want you to understand is that every September this sort yeah. of comes out. Yeah, we talked about that. And yeah. it's uh, something that uh, corresponds with the start of school. Uh, you know, school kids co go to uh, uh, class, and guess what? We're going to indoctrinate you now. And we got the new uh, ape man and, to tell uh, you. This is a uh, new ape man, and uh, this is this is you. Uh, uh, and two, two and a half million or four million years ago or whatever it is. Right, yeah. and, and it, it does detract, uh, sort of like a little ploy to detract uh, our children yep. from uh, believing in the, the biblical account. And, uh, you know, we, yeah, we sort of say, well, you, you may have your religion on this, but uh, we also have our faith in Jesus Christ, which uh, has a good explanation. And this uh, experiment that we propose will help us to establish that, uh, you know, this ape man uh, idea is uh, bogus. Of course, you know, you and I know oftentimes when they, when they get a date that's wrong, whether it's too high, let alone too low, they'll throw it out as been contamination. Right. But yeah. even so, it's still, you know, it, it's kind of like a lie detector test, Doug. It's not admissible in court, but you know, a dog on well, a lot of people don't want to take one because it'll it'll show who they really are, and that's anything with carbon fourteen. Uh, it, it'll 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 show something, and and if it shows any carbon fourteen, it's not two point three million years old. Yeah, carbon that. fourteen date, uh, uh, limestone, coal, diamonds, uh, all this stuff which which has carbon in it. Right. You're going to get younger young dates. And we'll, we hope you enjoyed our time on yeah, Revolution Against Evolution. We'll see you next time.